Okay, so this is the lecture on the middle passage. Uh, that's Klein's chapter six, I believe. Uh, let me start here. Uh, again, I will try and keep these uh, relatively short, uh, and then we will have time for questions uh, on the discussion board feature. Okay, so off we go. So the uh, middle passage is the passage from when the boats, uh, the slave vessels are filled off the coast of Africa, their journey across the Atlantic, and their delivery to ports in the New World. Um, this middle passage, uh, this, the story of it is shaped or uh, to some degree uh, warped by um, how this uh, plays out um, in the literature of the abolitionists. So the abolitionists uh, are emphasizing this story to demonstrate how bad it is. Um, this is uh, this is not incorrect. The middle passage was awful, but as Klein tells us, most mortality happened before or after the voyage. So the middle passage is the one where we have uh, some of the greatest uh, quantity of data about, but certainly uh, it's only a portion of the mortality rate for the slave. Um, one of the most famous abolitionists and the first one who really did a systematic study of this uh, is Thomas Clarkson, who was an abolitionist in, uh, in the UK. Uh, and the thinking about the slave trade in Britain at that time was that uh, all those vessels fly, uh, traveling to Africa, purchase slaves, benefits the uh, British government because it's the cradle of seamen. So they're, they're learning how to be sailors. They're there in case uh, they're needed. Well, what Clarkson did was he did, he was one of the first ones to do statistical work on this. And he demonstrated that um, instead of being uh, a training ground for British sailors in case of emergency, it was actually a, a, a charnel house. This is uh, deadly for these British soldiers. So uh, much higher mortality for British crews on the slave trade uh, voyages than in any other one. Uh, and so talking about the, this middle passage, it's largely we're talking about the slaves, but we also have to remember how uh, the crews are impacted as well. Uh, the slaves, uh, so examining the slave uh, trade, we have to take a look at these individual slaves uh, as they're, as they're uh, loaded into the boat and how they compare to other types of voyages. Um, slaves have the smallest amount of space uh, allotted to them. Uh, the only ones that are comparable would be convict uh, ships, uh, uh, ships loaded with prisoners being sent to uh, exile in either Australia or the New World, uh, or military troops. As it turns out, military troops don't get a lot of uh, spacing either. Um, compared to these two, they had, uh, so the slave ships had higher mortality. Uh, the only one that's even remotely comparable is uh, early 18th century immigration shipping. Uh, on those boats, the mortality rate is somewhat uh, similar to slave ships, although um, we'll talk a little bit about how that's different than slave ships. So uh, mortality on the slave ship fluctuates over time. Um, it's not a constant. There's a lot of things that play into it. Uh, and, and to a certain degree, there's a, a randomness. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about an example that Klein cites in a bit. Uh, but it, this randomness means that it's hard to prepare for it, and there's no uh, rational uh, explanation for it. The only thing that's really correlated with increasing uh, slave uh, mortality rates on the ships during this middle passage is the length of the voyage. If the ship is held up for some reason, bad weather or uh, trouble with the ship, um, the longer is it is at sea above a certain level, the more rapidly the mortality rate increases. Uh, it is generally unhealthy to be on these ships for anyone. Um, the the uh, Again, Klein deals with this as, uh, as an economic venture, and he says, like any economic venture, practice makes perfect. So there's a general trend uh, to uh, lowering the mortality rate over time. Uh, in the early uh, 1800s, um, by the early 1800s, I should say, the mortality rate was declining. Initially, in the early days of the slave trade, uh, 
um, the mortality rate was 20%. One in five slaves died on the voyage before they could be delivered for sale. Uh, by the early 1800s, this is significantly improved. The, the uh, most efficient at this is Portuguese, whose travels to Brazil resulted in an average mortality rate of 6%. Uh, of course, it's easy to see uh, Brazil to, or Africa to Brazil is the shortest route. So the speed with which the slaves were delivered had an implication for mortality rate. Uh, okay. Uh, it's interesting across, you know, so Klein is drawing upon a database that includes British ships, Spanish ships, Portuguese, French. Um, it's interesting then in looking at these different uh, shipping concerns that they coalesce around sort of a, a standard rate uh, or a standard uh, approach. So uh, through tr trial and error, these are again business uh, men, they're seeking to maximize their return. Through trial and error, a, a distinctive sh size and shape uh, is reached and shape also includes what's termed packing. There was uh, a, an ongoing debate between uh, folks who were tight packers and loose packers. So uh, tight packers cram as many uh, people on the boat as possible, knowing that they're going to lose some uh, percentage to uh, uh, dying along the way. Uh, so maximizing the return by getting as many people on the boat as possible. Uh, contrast to that were the loose packers. Um, the loose packers sought to uh, limit the amount of people or to space out as much as possible the amount of people with the intent uh, of delivering more slaves alive because slaves were very valuable. So um, here's a, a, a classic image of, uh, from abolitionist literature. This one would be a tight packer. This is the HMS Brooks. Um, as you look through, you can see that virtually every nook and cranny of this ship is crammed with uh, an, uh, a captured uh, human um, designed to maximize the amount of uh, folks on it. Now, this is a classic from abolitionist literature uh, because it shows it's a tight packed ship and it shows you how awful this is uh, uh, correctly. So uh, what, what is the cause of death in these passages? Well, there's a couple uh, of different elements that go on. One, uh, some of these are African causes. And so we've already talked about yellow fever and falcipian malaria, uh, how deadly they are for um, Europeans and also for those who had not encountered them before. And so the thing to bear in mind is when we're talking about uh, acquiring the slaves in this process that they call coasting, which is draw, uh, sailing up and down looking to purchase slaves along the coast, you may be purchasing slaves from a region where yellow fever is endemic, meaning it's constantly spreading. So the slaves you are acquiring uh, have already been exposed to it. But you may also be purchasing slaves from other regions uh, that are not, have never encountered it. So uh, that uh, they're just as susceptible to yellow fever uh, and falcipnia and malaria as the Europeans would be. So some of these are African causes. Uh, some are just the fact that you're cramming so many people onto a ship in tight quarters. Uh, dysentery, what they called the bloody flux, was a big killer. Uh, and uh, various fevers associated probably with uh, typhoid or um, maybe typhus or other type of ailments that have fevers as their manifesting cause or manifesting uh, symptom. Um, then you have, um, you know, and some of this too is it changes over time. In the early period, uh, scurvy was a problem. So scurvy is a vitamin deficiency. If you don't get enough vitamin C, you can develop this um, uh, affliction known as scurvy. Uh, and smallpox would have been a threat to uh, African slaves who were acquired from regions that weren't firmly connected uh, to the wider Eurasian world. Um, when they do become connected, then smallpox circulates uh, through these uh, inland populations, and so it's less of a threat over time they would have been exposed to it. Uh, the mortality rates are very high for the crew, uh, especially the closer, more closely you worked with um, the slave population, so folks who were called the ship's surgeons, they're the ones who are charged with uh, treating uh, sick crew members and slaves and going below decks to ensure the conditions of the slaves. They had the highest mortality rate. Uh, Liverpool slavers until the mid-1700s had uh, a mortality rate in the crew of 28%. Uh, 
uh, of which almost half of that would uh, have occurred while they were on the uh, African coast, uh, coasting to acquire these slaves. There's also a function of randomness, which uh, Klein points out on page 155, and it's a, it's a remarkable collection. It is um, a series of captains who have, uh, some of them as many as six uh, voyages, six voyages uh, where they were the captain in charge of the boat acquiring slaves. And in looking at those, you can see that even experienced captains um, would have uh, a, uh, a voyage that would be uh, disastrous, voyages where the mortality rates are as high as uh, 39%. Um, one first voyage was 54% mortality. These are remarkable uh, rates of mortality. You would also have someone who would have uh, very low rates. He had 3.5, and then his sixth voyage, on his first voyage, uh, uh, Captain uh, uh, Goya um, had 3.5% mortality on his first voyage, and his sixth voyage had 22.9%. So there's a certain amount of randomness that's involved in this, too. Uh, this business of uh, running slaves was um, uh, risky. Um, for a variety of reasons, and so we have um, uh, some things to bear in mind. And one of the, I don't want to say uh, criticisms of Klein, because he's very forthright about it, but um, you have to bear in mind that he's dealing with this as an economic issue. Uh, but um, the nature of the business is horrific, and so uh, periodically it's useful to remember, and as he points out, uh, if we accept a rough figure of 10% mortality as an average uh, rate for this middle passage from um, the earliest days until the last days of this uh, uh, Atlantic slave trade business, even if we accept 10%, uh, this is an appallingly high figure because this is not across a population of young to old, sickly, healthy. The people who are acquired as slaves are overwhelmingly young and in fit condition because people are purchasing them with the expectation they'll be able to deliver them for sale. You're not going to buy a slave who's already sick unless you're in desperate circumstances as a captain. So in general, this is a young, healthy population, uh, two-thirds male, one-third uh, female, uh, and yet still this business results in an uh, appallingly high mortality rate of somewhere around 10%. So the slave trade is a tricky business and, and uh, Klein gives us some interesting figures. Experience helps. The more experience you have in doing this, the, uh, the more likely you are to have a higher survival rate. Uh, again, uh, this book and, and other works like this are drawn upon a remarkable set of data. Uh, so. Uh, this is from 24,259 recorded voyages, uh, and examining these voyages by looking at the logbooks and following um, the captain's uh, accounts and, and the economic uh, accounts associated with it, we get 17% um, of voyages never delivered their cargo for a variety of reasons. Now, these 24,000 uh, cases are a little bit later in the slave trade because, what, as you'll see, one of the primary things that prevents slavers from delivering their cargo is the British Navy. But um, of those 24,259, 148 were lost at sea. 313 uh, were lost to slave rebellions. Always delightful to think that. Uh, 832 were stolen by pirates. Um, pirates, um, uh, their preferential piracy element would have been uh, the Spanish main delivering gold. Gold is much more portable, but uh, they were quite happy to capture slave ships and steal the cargo and sell it for themselves. Uh, and finally, uh, 1871 were captured by uh, the British uh, Royal African uh, Naval Squad who were stationed off the coast of Africa to enforce uh, the banning of slavery that the British had forced through. That banning of slavery is uh, what we will be discussing in our next lecture. Uh, lecture. So uh, I know I went through this very quickly, uh, but if you have any uh, questions or uh, comments that you want to work on, uh, the place to do that will be um, in the uh, uh, discussion board feature. Uh, and so I encourage you to post your questions there. Uh, and then I will uh, pick up there next time talking about um, this, uh, the, the makeup of the slave trade and its abolition. All right. See you next time. Stay healthy.